All right, guys, it is a stormy, blustery day here in the end times in paradise in St. Croix Virgin Islands. Somehow we have blown into Wednesday morning, March 30th, 2016. So Wednesday is when I get to bring you what's quickly becoming just simply my biggest doomsday rant of the week. This is when I bring you my climate change meltdown roundup rant where I go on the pages of the mainstream media which is sounding more and more like the, the line between the mainstream media and the alternative media is getting pretty blurred here guys uh, talking about climate change here in the year 2016 as, as more and more people pull their heads out of their asses and start to realize that you know things are turning weird on the planet folks we're gonna go from the North Pole to uh, to the Great Barrier Reef to right here in the Virgin Islands the Virgin Islands have uh, made it into the mainstream media uh, on climate change good lord it, it is hitting a little close to home but before I get into Yahoo News' top 100 stories on the planet, just want to introduce you guys to this fellow I've been listening to uh, for the past couple of months. He's a climatologist from, I believe, the University of Ottawa. And his name is Paul Beckwith. <coughs> and uh, he's just, just the latest climatologist saying uh, you know it's time to get real people and, uh, and, and and start explaining in no nonsense terminology what is unfolding on this planet so if you're not familiar with Paul Beckwith I'm going to play a small clip from uh, his rant just a day or two ago uh, assuming this computer will play let's listen to maybe a minute before the Wi-Fi runs out take it away Paul Beckwith climatologist and explain to the clueless morons on this planet what's getting ready to happen in their lives and at the end of this video I don't have the queued up here he is talking about the shit hit, hitting the fan not at some vague time you know in 2100 when you and your kids are both dead he's saying that you know the serious shit he's saying in the next one to two decades the next 10 to 20 years starting to sound more and more like guy mcpherson anyway this is Paul Beckwith chat on our abrupt climate change emergency. Is on, you know, I, I think we're, we're reaching a point where, where the public is going to go from not caring or kind of tuning out climate change to going into a mode of sheer panic. You know, utter panic over, my God, we're all doomed. You know, we can't do a thing. We've left it too late. And, you know, pointing fingers at scientists for not communicating the problem, you know, enough for not standing up and yelling from the tops of buildings or, you know, pointing fingers at politicians or pointing fingers, you know, maybe some of them will even point fingers where the fingers should be pointed. And that's really at the uh, denial and the heavily funded um, oil company, you know, large corporations heavily funding uh, people to scream at the top of their lungs saying that climate change, oh, it's always happened, you know, humans are insignificant, we're not doing anything, you know, what can we do, it's a big planet, etc. You know, all of, this, all of this nonsense. I mean, that's where where most of the blame uh, should, should go on stopping action on climate change. I mean, it's yeah, the, the blame game. The blame game. This 
an easy game. A question, uh, more important question is, is, is what the hell do we think we're going to do about it? Uh, anyway, thank you, Paul, for uh, explaining that to folks. So now we're going to turn our attention to the mainstream media, the top 100 stories on the planet this morning at the end of March. Here's a report from ABC News. Can't get much more mainstream media than ABC News, who gets a lot of their funding from the fossil fuel industry, you better believe. How about this one? Arctic sea ice reaches new record low for winter time. The growth of Arctic sea ice this winter 2016 peaked at the lowest maximum level ever on record thanks to extraordinarily warm temperatures, federal scientists said Monday. This is the National Snow and Ice Data Center um, said that the ice maximum peaked out a little over 5 million square miles. That is 5,000 square miles less than the old record set in, take a wild guess, 2015. A difference slightly smaller than the state of Connecticut and it is also about 431,000 square miles less than the 30-year average going back to 1979. That is the size of Texas and California combined. There you go. Uh, this doesn't necessarily mean that the minimum extent this summer will also break a record. And that is wait. We'll have to wait to see, wait till September to uh, see how that plays out. But Data Center Chief Mark Cereze, bottom line view on what's going on in 2016, quote, I have never seen such a warm, crazy winter in the Arctic. There you go. And also indications show that the sea ice is thinner than last year. And a leading but still controversial theory says loss of sea ice in the Arctic may change the jet stream and bring more extreme weather. Yeah, the jet stream and the ocean currents and everything else. Uh, the, this is Michael Mann chiming in, quote, the new report reveals, quote, just the latest disturbing data point in a disturbing trend wherein climate changes are happening even faster than we had forecast. No shit, Sherlock, with, with, with every one of these studies coming out in 2016. Virtually every single study that has come out this year, the scientists, uh, just their heads spinning that, that yes, all of their computer models have been wrong. Just as Alex Jones always claiming they've been wrong, but the problem is they have been wrong, you know, been way underestimating how shit is unfolding on this planet. Uh, yep, yep, yep. So from uh, the, the Arctic Ocean to the Great Barrier Reef uh, off of Australia, you notice how, how these headlines with each passing week have predict predictably gotten more severe. And so just as we see Arctic sea ice breaking a new record this year, we have another record being broken for 2016 as we see the worst, 
Carl bleaching on record for Great Barrier Reef. Aerial surveys of Australia's Great Barrier Reef have revealed the worst bleaching on record in the icon's pristine north, scientists said Tuesday, with few corals escaping damage. Researchers said the view was devastating after surveying some 520 reefs. Uh, this is Terry Hughes, an expert on coral reefs from James Cook University. Quote, this will change the Great Barrier Reef forever. We are seeing huge levels of bleaching in the northern thousand kilometer stretch for the Great Barrier Reef. Yes, and uh, getting this, the severity is much greater, much greater than in earlier bleaching events in 2002 or 1998. Uh, this is good old World Wildlife Fund Australia spokesman Nick, he Nick Heath, one of many conservationists putting the bleaching squarely at the feet of climate change. Quote, when you look at those stark white photos, you are looking at the face of climate change. Yes, you are. Uh, okay, right here from Reuters News, the No Shit Sherlock uh, story, uh, just this latest uh, story about about the this unadulterated horseshit uh, that the International Energy Agency ha has been spewing out like a goddamn smokestack uh, about how CO2 emissions are falling on this planet. You know, acting like that that they're falling everywhere from. Uh, the U.S. to China, and this is Reuters news, uh, taking a little bit of Reuters news, bringing out the bullshit button. Too early to hail dip in China's CO2. Do, do you think so? Reports of a historic dip in China's Carbon dioxide emissions in the past two years are premature because of uncertainty over data showing the pace of a decline in coal use by the world's biggest coal consumer, a study showed on Monday. The International Energy Agency has been among those saying that energy-related CO2 emissions by China, the world's biggest emitter, fell in 2015 and 2014. Well, this is the Center for International Climate and Environmental Research, quote, headlines about falling emissions may be misinterpreting the numbers. Yes. Uh, blah, blah, blah. Of course, uh, of course, the IEA stuck by its conclusions. And this next story which was going to be my lead-off story uh, for today's climate change rant, but I, I had a, an entire rant about Bill McKibben's uh, newest article uh, appearing in the nation, alternate.org, picked it up, that you better believe nowhere 
uh, have the editors of Yahoo News thought that this was worth mentioning to its readers anywhere in the top 100 stories on the planet this week. Uh, Bill McKibben talking about uh, if, if anybody thinks these statistics about CO2 levels horseshit or just limited to China, uh, it, he just, for anybody who wants to understand that uh, the same can be said here in the United States, not uh, due to coal, but due to fracking of natural gas and that the methane leaking from all of these, these fracking operations very well uh, could mean that natural gas via fracking actually produces more, more uh, greenhouse gases via methane than the burning of coal. Uh, as I have a whole new, I have a whole rant on that that you can find. Uh, I'm just going to read one paragraph for, for anybody uh, thinking uh, that this unadulterated horseshit coming out of the IEA and the EPA and, 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 and Alex Jones and any other fucking clueless moron climate change denier. Uh, let, let Bill McKibben set you straight. These methane leaks are big enough to wipe out a large share of the gains from the Barack Obama administration's work on climate change. All those closed coal mines and fuel efficient cars. In fact, it is even possible that America's contribution to global warming increased during the Obama years. Even possible, my ass. Uh, the methane story is utterly at odds with what we have been telling ourselves, not to mention what we have been telling the rest of the planet. It undercuts the promises we made at the climate talks in Paris. It is a disaster and one that seems set to spread, meaning as fracking cranks up uh, all over the, the rest of the planet, uh, is, what, is, is what McKibben's talking about here. Uh, anyone, anyone pulling, you know, thinking that, that we're going to save this planet from moving to cold and natural gas when, when probably what we've done by moving from, like we've even moved from coal to natural gas, is we've just gone once again out of the frying pan into the fire. Just, just, just one more, uh, you know, how many of these frying pan to the fire rants, coal to natural gas, frying pan to fire, and, and at this point, the bigger one, building climate change, frying us, or geoengineering, sending us into the fire. Uh, th this is going to be where it's leading. I don't, uh, of course, not one story in the in the mainstream media uh, about the, these goddamn mad scientists. And, and and I believe that Paul Beckwith, uh, not sure. I need to double check this, but I believe. That, that Paul Beckwith is getting, uh, is at least starting to climb on the geoengineering bandwagon. Uh, and, and, and once we bring out the chemtrails, hey guys, we're, we're fucked. It doesn't matter. Bring out the goddamn chemtrails at this point. You know, we are so fucked. But anyway, speaking of who's fucked, I, right here, finally, the good old Virgin Islands making 
the the top 100 uh, stories on the planet. There's two versions of this story. Here here's there's one of the two of them. 16 states. That means vir the U.S. Virgin Islands being one of those states. Announce a new coalition to fight for climate change progress. 16 of the nation's top law enforcement officials have come together to curb greenhouse gas pollution, advance clean energy, and pursue joint investigations into whether the fossil fuel industry and its allies committed crimes by lying to investors and the public about climate change. This is just the latest on, uh, on all of these allegations blowing up in Exxon's face. Uh, Bill McKibben's been ranting about this. Uh, everyone from Bill McKibben to goddamn Hillary Clinton uh, they're, they're a bunch of goddamn criminals that, that they knew goddamn well going back, it appears, all the way back to the 1970s, certainly back to the early 90s, that ExxonMobil knew goddamn well their own scientists saying the burning of fossil fuels, our product is going to kill this planet. And, and so what did they do? They started this giant uh, smoke screen uh, starting this climate denial conspiracy, uh, which is the true climate change conspiracy, is the denial. Uh, these, de these idiots like Alex Jones and, and, his, and his ilk. Uh, and, and so this is more and more of the state attorneys general, including right here the guy in, in the Virgin Islands. Uh, you're going to see more and more states start uh, suing Exxon. This is uh, New York Attorney General Eric Schneiderman. Quote, in the face of gridlock in Washington, we're stepping into this breach. Uh, this is Massachusetts Attorney General Mara Healy. Quote, in my view, there is nothing we need to worry about more than climate change. It's incredibly serious when you think about the human and economic consequences. No shit. Uh, so Schneiderman said they will be these these attorney general will be finding quote creative ways to enforce laws being flouted by fossil fuel companies and their allies for the sh sake of short-term profits. Uh, Schneiderman's office has announced an investigation of Exxon Mobil and California Attorney General Kamala Harris following suit and let's hear from the US Virgin Islands Attorney General called Walker. What is going on? Why is the U.S. Virgin Islands, including right where your old Doomsday Prophet is sitting and, uh, and, and looking around at real estate? Quote, it's not that much an, an environmental issue as about survival. Close quote, said Walker, as in the face of the destruction and danger from increasingly violent tropical storms and hurricanes caused by climate change, Walker said that Virgin Islands residents 
are being forced to consider relocating away from the region just uh, between you and me mr mr walker i've been here all together i've lived in the virgin islands for seven months in the seven months that i have lived in the virgin islands i have heard climate change and, and i'm living in an eco lodge i would say in seven months climate change has been the topic of conversation for less than five minutes i have never in my entire life heard one virgin islander talking about climate change never once but i have heard plenty of virgin islanders talking about buying real estate buying and selling real estate and including beachfront real estate you know right down from me how many rants uh, i had uh about the you know these these goddamn planet eaters talking about build you know raping and pillaging 600 acres down at the bottom of this hill to to put in the, this big ass condo complex and golf course and and all of this shit oh yeah oh yeah virgin island residents are being forced to consider relocating away from the region Anyway, as long as we're talking somewhat about the Atlantic Ocean, I think that I'm in the Atlantic Ocean now. Atlantic drilling off the table, but survey permits pending. This is the story, uh, this is the latest story about Barack Obama, uh, you know, saving the planet by keeping fossil fuels in the ground, by by taking uh, the Atlantic Ocean off the table for oil drilling. Well, that AP explained the, the small print of, uh, of the announcement. While drilling for oil and natural gas in the Atlantic Ocean is off the table for now, permits are still pending that could allow seismic surveys to map just how much oil might be out there. Hmm. Yes. Uh, environmental groups worry that the loud sounds from the air guns will harm marine life such as whales and sea turtles. Blah, blah, blah. So, uh, just, just so you understand, the oil companies have uh, they are still if anyone thinking the permits to explore for oil are off the table uh, one thing to tell you and uh, going hand in hand with that this has something to do uh, you draw your own dots between several of these stories and and climate change particularly bill mckibben's story on fracking taking down the planet this is this reuters spin on that u.s geological service revises seismic risk map to include quakes caused by humans meaning fracking earthquakes caused by human activity will now be included in the U.S. Geological Survey's seismic risk maps, the agency said on Monday after a sharp rise in earthquakes linked to wastewater disposal wells used by the oil and gas industry. Yep, 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 yep. Uh, namely, talking about Oklahoma and Texas, it reminded me of this uh, Hopi end times prophecy rant I had a while back with the, this the, this hundred and two year old 
Hopi elder saying back in the 1970s, you can look for earthquakes in Texas. And this was his prediction back in the 1970s. When you start seeing earthquakes in Texas, you will know we are in the end times. But the sun has come out here in the end times in St. Croix. And uh, so I'm going to get back, figuring out what I'm going to do with my life, decide whether it is time to relocate from the area before a hurricane blows my ass off of this island back to Texas where I will get killed in a fracking caused earthquake for this week's climate change meltdown around up rant bye guys okay you little US Virgin Islands dog are you considering relocating what do you think? Is it time to move back to Texas? I can see how concerned this Virgin Island resident is about climate change. It looks like every other U.S. Virgin Island resident being concerned about climate change. Bye, guys.